Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to look at how to use the multi-page control for your Excel VBA user forms. Now the multi-page control can come in very handy when you have a lot of controls to fit onto a user form or you just want to logically group uh, those aspects of controls onto different pages or tabs. So on screen I have a list of customers and I have a user form that we use to edit customer details. I can open that user form by pressing this button on the right hand side of my worksheet. And here it is. It's just a simple little form but I have two tabs in it and that is the multi-page control in action. Just logically grouping uh, customer details that I can view and edit and then also common tasks that I'm imagining people might perform on this list like removing duplicates and exporting PDFs and by using the multi-page control I can logically group them so that I don't clutter one user form with lots of stuff um, yes and also make it easier for people to find this stuff so let's have a look how you can use the multi-page control to create a user form like this. So here we are in the Visual Basic Editor and I have the beginnings of a user form. Uh, you can see that I've got, it's just called Customer Form, that's the caption, and two buttons for OK Cancel on here. I have my toolbox on the right hand side. If you do not see your toolbox, you may have to press the toolbox button on the toolbar or click view and toolbox. What I don't have at the moment is a properties window. So if I click on view and properties window, that will appear in my bottom left hand corner by default. So I can make some changes to the user form. And if I just click on my user form again, I have the toolbox appear. And we want to insert the multi-page control and that is this one on there, multi-page. Be careful not to confuse it with the tab strip control, which is just next to it. So easy to make that mistake. Uh, we want the multi-page control. So once you've got the multi-page control, give it a click, and then we're going to draw it onto our sheet. So here we go. Let me just click and drag and draw the beginnings of a multi-page control. Don't worry if you don't get the size and that massively accurate first time, you can always come back and edit that at a later date. And that will start you off with two pages, page one, page two, for the ability to create more. And the properties window in the bottom left is just showing me at the moment some details about my multi-page control. For example, it's called multi-page one. We have the potential to change that, uh, but at the moment, I am just going to leave that as multi-page one um, because it's not like I'm going to have any others. So I think that would be quite easy uh, to refer to. And we will have to refer to it uh, when I show in this video how to refer to controls on the different pages of it. Now, we've got two ways that we can change the name of these pages and other details. We can either use the properties window in the bottom left or I could just right mouse click on a page and I have the option here to rename it or even delete it or add new pages if you want more than two. I only have two in my example. I shall click rename and you'll see this little window appear prompting for a caption, a accelerator key and some control tip text. Now the caption, I will rename that to details. I'll recaption it to details. Name is the wrong word to use there. Accelerator key, I can put letter D. So the accelerator key is when you can hold down the Alt key and then press that letter, so Alt D, as a way of jumping to that page. So you don't have to grab your mouse or your touchpad in order to click it. You can just go Alt D and it takes you to it. Uh, you can see in the background on the VBA editor, how the letter T is underscored for tools and A for add-ins, W for window, they are the accelerator keys. If I did Alt T, it would drop the tools menu down. 
control tip text, I could put edit customer details and click OK. So I've been able to change those three inf bits of information about that tab or that page. It's now called details. See how it's underscored the D. Now I can also make these changes in the properties window in the bottom left. Uh, see how it's got the accelerator as D down there, the caption of details, the control tip 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 text of edit customer details. I shall add a name as well. I'm going to name it PG details. I like to use a prefix, so PG for page is a habit I have, details for obvious reasons. And now that's confirmed as the actual name of the control, or the name of the page. And I'll need that, um, or need is too strong a word, but I can use that uh, when I'm trying to move to or reference that page in my code. Let's just go and do the same to the other page. I'm going to click on page two and then modify it in the properties window uh, as opposed to right clicking, like I showed a moment ago, because that doesn't give you the opportunity to change the name and that's, that's pretty important. I'm going to name it PG Tasks, accelerator key of T, caption as tasks, and some control tip text. You don't really have to worry about the control tip text, but I want to demonstrate what it is at the moment, uh, common tasks. Worthwhile mentioning while I'm here, there's also an index option a little further down. I'm going to show you how to use that index option uh, to reference these pages very shortly in this video. So just to point out in the properties window that you can see it's indexed down there. Tasks is index one. Let me switch to the up details page is index zero, indexes start from zero. Okay, let's see what we have so far in action. So if I just close down this editor and then click the user form button on the sheet like before, here is that user form. It doesn't have anything interesting on it yet, but it has the two tabs that I can click between they're called details and tasks. As I hover my mouse over the tabs, there is the control tip text. And I can also use the shortcut of Alt T to get to tasks and Alt D to get to details, which is the accelerator key in action. Okay, so we have looked at how to create the multi-page control and then how we can edit details about the pages such as their name, accelerator, key, and caption. Now let's look at how to refer to it with VBA code. And as an example, what I would like is when somebody presses the button to open the form, if the user has a cell selected within this customer table, I would like it to load the details about that customer into the form and take them to the details tab. But if they're on a cell outside of that range, of A to G, then I would like it to take them to the tasks tab. So let's go to the developer and open up Visual Basic and have a look at that form. So here we have it. This is what we've got so far. I have created the controls so this video doesn't go on forever. <laughs> so the text boxes and the buttons are loaded in to that multi-page control but I would like it to take me to the tasks tab if I'm on an empty cell and the details tab if I'm not on an empty cell. So I'm going to double click the user form so that it takes me to some user form events and I've already written some code for the initialize event. When you double click the user form, it probably won't take you to the initialize event, but you can select that from the drop down list in the top right corner. Here I have that, and I've already written some code for some basic functionality for it. If the column is between one and eight and it's not empty, then load the details into um, load the details from the sheet into the control. And that bit is done. What I will add in there though, here we have that code, is some code to select the appropriate tab. Now the tab belongs to the multi-page control, not to the form. So it's very important when you're creating a control that you're aware if you're drawing it on the form 
or inside a page on the multi-page control. So to select this, I can choose multi-page one. Remember that was the name of the multi-page control I had. Let me just quickly remind us, if I double click the form, or not even that actually, if I just move down here and choose, select here, multi-page. Multi-page one is its name. So I'm going to put multi-page one dot value. Now that's a bit strange that we have to use the value property here, uh, but it is what it is. And then equal to zero. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that this would be important. Zero is the index of the details tab. If I put one, that would be the tasks tab. So the value of the multi-page control is equal to zero. And if I just take a copy of that line, and then inside this if statement, if I put an else, so if it doesn't meet that criteria, the value equals one, which is the task tab. So go to the details tab, go to the task tab. And let's have a look at what we have here. If I close down the editor, and then within this user form, notice I'm on a blank cell at the moment outside the list. If I open the form, it takes me to the tasks tab. If I cancel that, click inside the table, click on the button, takes me to the details tab, and also loads in information about that customer, which is Elizabeth Lincoln. If I cancel that and click a different customer and press it, it loads up that details. But the important thing here is that it's taken me to a specific tab of the multi-page control. And it's important that we know how to select different tabs within our code if you're going to use this control. Okay, now it is also important to know how to modify properties about the multi-page control during your macro, so by using VBA code. So let's have an example of doing that. And what I would like is if somebody opens the form whilst being inside this list, I would like it to show the information about the user, like column one where we have the ID and column two their name. I would like the information to be shown in the caption of that page. So instead of it being called details in the page tab, on the ID and the name of the user to be shown there. And that'll be an example of seeing how can we access the information about our page, how can we change it. So let's do that. Let me double click on the initialize, sorry, on the user form to take me to the initialize event for it. We have the code in there from a moment ago, and I'm going to add something extra. So we need multi-page one again, because that's the name of this control and the page belongs to the control, not the user form. And I'm going to look at two ways that you can do this. We could use the pages collection. So you might be familiar with the worksheets or the workbooks collection. We also have the pages collection. And just like when you do refer to worksheets, for example, we can either use the index number like zero. So remember um, that the first uh, page is index zero, the second one's index one, or I could write its name uh, was PG uh, details uh, inside it, just like when you refer to worksheets or workbooks or ranges. Now let's go for the index number here. Let me choose zero, close bracket, dot caption. So the caption of the first page of multi-page one equals then I'm going to use the cells object. Now this is something a little bit different in this video. I've got the letter I storing the current row number. Um, if you've taken my Excel VBA course, uh, you'll know how to use this. It's all covered in that course. If this is starting to get a little bit strange for you, it might be something you wanna check out. I have a link in the description of this video for you to do just that, uh, to build up your VBA skills. Otherwise, this video wants to focus on the use of this specific control. But I'm just building up a caption here. I'm using the ID, which is column one of that row, hyphen, and then we're going to have column B, so I comma two, the second column, dot value, their name. And let's have a look at this in action. If we close down the editor, 
And then if I click somewhere in here and open up the form, you can see where the page was previously called details. It's now 1112 Patricio Simpson. And then the task tab does what the task tab does. And if I click a different person, open it up, their information is in the tab instead of the word details. Now, if I go back to Visual Basic, just to show another way of achieving it. So you can use the pages collection. So pages zero, you could also just write the name of the page in there. So I could put PG details, therefore bypassing the pages collection. So multi-page one, it's important you refer to that, pgdetails.caption, rah, 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 like before. Let's show that working. Once again, click anybody, open the form, details at the top. So that is how we can use the multi-page control in Excel VBA. How to create it, set some of its properties, but then be able to change those properties during the running of a macro, like the initialize event or the clicking of a button potentially, um, and also how we can select a specific page. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.